the, the, the concept, at least in my, in my drafting, um, was to give flexibility to the town, maximum flexibility, you can terminate at any time, but some stability to the contractor because it's been going on forever and this doesn't go on forever. It goes on for three years and after three years, it automatically has the provision that requires, um, I guess, a, a look forward if, if, it, if it's going to renew. Otherwise, it just renews for one year. Um, but it can be looked at at any time. Actually, if you have the right to terminate, you have the right to say, hey, look, we need to talk about this contract because I have a problem. No, so I, 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 I acknowledged in, the, in my comments that uh, you can give notice and we can terminate. But what I went on to say was that there's no exit provision termination assistance should either party choose to get out. So some of the things that we said that we needed to have in this type of contract, I don't, the provisions and the safeties aren't there. I, I don't believe that they could have been strengthened and hopefully next time we address this that we would strengthen them. And secondly, um, the service agreements, uh, you know, I just don't see that they, uh, I appreciate they're putting in and I appreciate, uh, you know, that they'll be tracked and reported on, but, but uh, they're not binding, so to speak. So, anyway, that was my comment. Thank you, Bill. 18. 18. Item number 25, Bill. Uh, the MCE contract. Um, first off, uh, you know, we talked about last year, about uh, next time this came up for renewal, that we were going to RFP it. And, um, and again, uh, you know, so we're, you know, time got the better of everything, and so we are where we are. There's not much that can be done. MCE is doing an excellent job. There's not a question there. They're doing a good job both on our streets in the town as well as uh, with the enhanced work that they're doing in the park. So that's very, very much appreciated and my comments don't necessarily, re you know, shouldn't be taken as, as disagreeing with that. However, I do think all major contracts need to be competed, you know, every three years or less to make sure that we're getting the right terms and the right, right uh, uh, pricing. I also mentioned to the city manager, I know that there is the provision in there for the water and I appreciate the, the staff at, would be at that and I know there was a clarification today. I would only recommend that in the, in the face of water shortages and thinking about cutting back, um, that as opposed to saying they can be 10% over on the, on the water from the last three years when there was a lot more visit, vegetation, for example, in El Camino and we used to have water running down the street, that, that, a lot of that's been corrected. A three-year average with 10% seems a little high to me, and I would have suggested that we consider either at the three-year average level or at something such as, uh, you know, 90% in the, in, the, you know, in the face of trying to conserve. But we don't want them to just turn off all the water so that everything goes brown in, the, you know, in some of our locations. But, uh, but I would think that that would be a doable thing. That's my comment on number 25. So I would like to make sure that we repeat, compete this, you know, do an RFP and get it out next year for sure. Okay. Uh, any other council members would you like to comment or pull an item on the consent agenda? Seeing none. I'm going to go ahead and ask the public, any members of the public, would you like to pull an item on the consent agenda, items number 8 through 25? Any members of staff? Seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and close that. Call for a motion. Oh, can I make one other comment uh, uh, on number 12? Please, Bill. Uh, I, I just would like to make sure that people in the audience that may have read the Mercury News today, there was an article in there and it implied that Item number 12, that the council was, was providing the city manager with a 25% re, uh, raise tonight, and that's not the case. Not at all. Um, we, in fact, the council was getting a 25% uh, raise. <laughs> however, <laughs> however uh, the, the number of the salary increases is 1.5%. So, uh, so in case I know I had a lot of phone calls today with regards to that. And I'd like to Thank you. Make Bill. sure we're clear on it. Thanks for that. So, I'd like to move that we approve the consent calendar items eight through twenty-five. Do I have a second? Okay. Second. Any further discussion? 
Call for vote. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Thank you very much. Let's go ahead and move on to item number 26. Apologize. It's on the regular agenda. Uh, committee appointments and possible interviews. Town Manager Roberts. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of the Council, you have uh, you had a note earlier that one of the applicants has withdrawn their application. That's uh, Walter Sleeve from the Parks and Rec appointment. So you've got three committees to consider appointments for this evening. One is the Audit Finance Committee, on which you have three positions and four applicants. And then for Parks and Rec, you have uh, three candidates and three positions. One is Dames, one is Foundation, so they're kind of you know, automatic for the approval of the Council. And the other is a single applicant for the vacancy. Uh, and then for Rail Committee, one vacancy, one applicant. So you have the procedures before you this evening. You can make one motion for uh, Parks and Rec and, and uh, Rail, and then discuss the other if you so desire. Thank you. Any questions for George? Seeing none. Any questions from Todd? Seeing none. All right. Uh, uh, Can I just ask a question, please, question. about, um, in the staff report on page three, uh, talking about, um, it gives council the option to make a motion uh, or to decide if uh, Mr. Conlon is eligible or not eligible. I, it's my understanding he's running, uh, he's, he's the candidate for treasurer. I mean, is there anything uh, in the FPDC? Can a, can a person run for two offices or hold two offices? Um, well, the, the doctrine of law is called incompatibility of offices, but he doesn't hold another office yet. I mean, if he's not successful, it's a moot point. If he is successful at that point in time, then it would be a question of whether or not the office of treasurer has anything to do um, with finances that could impact the, the city or the town of Atherton and at that point in time we'd have to make a decision as to whether or not there is an incompatibility but at this point you can certainly try to do both okay. for now. Thank you. Uh, would any of the applicants for the fine audit finance committee like to make any comments? Don't rush the mic, please. So <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. My name is Jeffrey Lee, and I'm one of the candidates for the Audit Finance Committee. And um, I'm very uh, uh, grateful and a uh, glad member of the town of Atherton, and I'm very happy for all the service that all of you provide to the town. Um, and it is simply out of a sense of civic duty that I feel like uh, we as residents benefit so much not only from the town of Atherton, but as citizens of the United States. And I believe that it's our duty, uh, while we have uh, the time to do so, to volunteer and provide services. I understand that this committee is to provide advisories, uh, no decision-making power, but to provide support and to give you additional um, support, since, as you mentioned earlier, you are non-compensated, and you are yourselves uh, public servants, elected officials, but also servants to the community. So that's the reason. Um, I originally was interested in the committee by uh, my, uh, my uh, very positive feeling towards another committee, which was the planning com 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 committee, and watching them, uh, some, from my experience, sometimes very long hours at night, and talking about issues that were so important that we take for granted, uh, including things, I don't want to go into detail, but including things that you'd never imagine, like the traffic on Valparaiso and how it impacts the residents and how we interact with these wonderful schools that are on our, in our town. Um, my personal professional background actually is in audit and finance and I have, um, that is my, my full-time job in a venture capital firm. I am a chief financial officer and so uh, I'm very familiar with, uh, with, at a high level, the type of things that, that uh, the audit and finance committee, I believe, would support the city council. And, um, and that is why I put my hat in to, uh, to uh, be a candidate. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Any other members of the audit finance? Beautiful. We'll move on to the next group of members, which any members of the 
Parks and Recreation Commission, would you like to step forward to speak? Frank, Marilee Gardner. Uh, yeah, you, you don't have to speak if you don't want to. No, I, I don't think I have anything to say except that I'm looking forward to being on the committee. Thank you very much and thank, thank you for being here. And Walter is Holt and uh, William Hoy. So we also have one for rail. You're here if you'd like to speak at all, say anything. You don't have to. Put you on the spot. Because you're going to be appointed. <laughs> but we just like to meet you. Yes, absolutely. I'm, I'm the only person who's volunteered for this job that says something about it. <laughs> it's a great job. <laughs> Desirability of the work. A lot of competition. It's but a great group. It is. I wanted to say that I have a personal interest. I live near the train station, my husband and I. We bought the home because we feel that's an area that could be beautified and increased in value. Um, but I think this sort of situation that can hang over an area for a very long time does nothing but begin to depress property values. And that spreads. Um, I also have a degree in a master's degree in political economy. I'm used to a lot of detail, and in my professional life, I sold uh, commercial office buildings to major corporations in the New York area. So I'm used to taking a lot of detailed information, making proposals, and presenting it to high-level people. And I thought it was a good match. I read most of the document, and it is riddled with errors, and it has assumptions, technical assumptions in there, which are incorrect. And I have run those by some technical experts. I included those in my comments to Caltrain on the environmental impact report. So it is that kind of critical thinking that I think I can bring and not just say yes, no, we don't like it, we're opposed to it, to, to do something creative and to explain why something could be done better, I think is the crux of the issue. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. We are going to be very welcome on the rail. Have, have you attended a rail committee meeting? Very good. No, I attended the May at the last meeting of the council when you uh, approved the letter which went off to the environment's impact. So, so you will find some folks on that committee that <coughs> you will feel in tremendous harmony with, mm -hmm. I assure you. I You'll took the initiative to contact Jack Wernum. Um, I've spoken with Paul, I've spoken to Rosemary, I've right. uh, spoken to Kevin Carlty, I've met with him. So I took that upon myself when the environmental impact report comments were due. Mm -hmm. I thought that was important. Mm -hmm. So I have reached out already, and that's why I influenced my decision. You're, you're going to be very welcome. And it's a lifetime appointment. It is. No term limits. Like, yeah, it's, like it's like the Supreme Court. Yeah. People on the rail committee don't leave. Except the day is different. Yeah. I would like to make one comment that I think would, is important. I read your document, the council of the town council. And in there it says that you would like to seriously examine the quiet zone for the town of Atherton. And I think the train, my husband and I hired an acoustical engineer, and he has measured the sound of the train passing, and we all know what that sounds like, mm -hmm. but the real decibel level comes from the horn. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is several orders of magnitude yeah. greater. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And we can work to get a quiet area within Atherton, and if other towns want to join, they can. There's an issue on insurance cost. But if we work together <clears throat> with other towns, we can accomplish that. And I think in terms of noise pollution and increasing the quality of life for a large variety of residents in Atherton, I think that would be something positive to focus on as well. That is something that the real committee talks about all the time. So you'd be very welcome to bring that up again. Thank we're, you. We're, we're signed up. We're, yeah. we're there. All right, so if I can go ahead and get a motion to approve the members that are eligible for the Parks and Recreation Committee, the Rail Committee, and then we can talk about the uh, Audit and Finance Committee. Uh, I'll move that we uh, appoint each of the applicants to the open positions for all three of those committees. I'll second it. Uh, any further discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the audit. Yeah. 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 Rick's normally a loud speaker, but tonight he's almost on vacation mode. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, talk about the uh, Audit and Finance Committee. Um, we have uh, Greg Conlon, and I think that there is some discussion that is he eligible for uh, another term, and we have a new applicant, uh, Jeffrey Lee, that is applying for that. So, whoa. Anybody have any suggestions? Do you want to go ahead and call out? No, well, yeah, I'd like to make a comment. I, I spoke to the city manager about uh, this. Uh, so, first off, both candidates are extremely well qualified, and, uh, and we're lucky to have two great candidates. And be <coughs> if we could, you know, I'd love to have both of them on the committee. If we could uh, maybe at a future date consider opening it up. Um, uh, with regards to, to Greg, um, I believe, Greg, you, you took the position I had when I got elected. And, and as such, you know, I was already, had completed a year of the term, and I think you took my term, and then you were, you know, and then you got reappointed when we ended up going. So for me, the term limit, and I ex expressed it to George, and, and, and he didn't disagree, um, the term limit is, I, when we said two terms, we were implying, I thought, an eight-year term, two four-year terms. And I don't believe uh, that you've served eight consecutive years. Is that correct, Greg? Because my recollection is it's not. Well, there was an audit and a finance committee, right. and I served on the audit. Right. And then they merged the two together. Mm -hmm. And then I w went to the to the merge committee, mm -hmm. but I don't think I've served for eight years. I, I, yeah, but I the know staff that. should know. I yeah. okay. She says no, so I didn't have not served for eight years. Right. So I don't. I think that the staff report was you know, incorrectly, even though maybe you you participated in multiple terms, you're not termed out, as has been implied in the staff report. Is what I would like to was trying. Was trying it's news to, to me. I, I was not aware that that was an issue. So. Perfect. Any other questions for Greg? So why don't we just uh, go ahead and put this to a vote and uh, see who's going to be on the audit and finance. I look forward to it. be happy to serve again if there's any question. Thanks, Greg. with four votes, and Jeffrey Lee with three votes. Those are the top three vote getters. Okay. So it looks like we're going to be welcoming Jeffrey Lee. Uh, Jim Massey, thank you again for your wonderful work and uh, another term. And Bob, as usual. And Greg, you can always attend. You know that uh, your voice is always heard, and if you've been a very valuable person. And thank you very much for your service within the Finance Committee. Can I just make a comment? Please. Greg, I wish you all the best in your uh, campaign. I know you're going to campaign hard and, um, you know, be very involved in all that. So um, I wish you the best and uh, success in that. And thank you so much for your service with the town. Thank you. Rick, anybody else? Uh, Greg, a wonderful job, I mean, no doubt. And uh, chairing it, as you, it's a different different feel from the chair's position, but uh, you've been doing a wonderful job for the town, and I know you'll continue to help us, so thank you again. 
I think, you know, again, we had uh, excellent candidates in all the positions, and, and uh, Greg, thank you very much for all the work you've done here as well as on the rail committee. And Jeff, strap on your boots, ready to go. Thank you. Thank you for applying. I think there's a binder with your name on it or something. Or, it is. Or we'll put your name on it. So we're going to go ahead and move on to item number 27, consideration and possible adoption of resolution assessing the special parcel tax for the municipal, municipal services for fiscal year 2014-2015. Robert? Hello. Good evening, Council. Good evening, members of the public. Uh, before you is the uh, a recommendation to adopt a resolution assessing a special tax, special parcel tax for municipal <coughs> services for fiscal year 2014-15. As you all are aware, in November 2013, the residents of Appleton Food Measure X um, this provides for the continuation of the Park Town special parcel tax. And it's for it at its current levels for fiscal years 14-15 uh, through fiscal year 17-18. Ordinance number 581 allows the council and authorizes them to levy a special parcel tax on all properties within the town of Atherton. Um, authorized uses, uses are for police services, <coughs> patrol, street repair and maintenance, and <coughs> drainage, facility repairs and maintenance. Um, the ordinance also calls for the council to determine the total amount of the expenditures necessary to provide adequate levels of identified services. As we recall on our, at our June 4th uh, study session, the council discussed the proposed rate for fiscal year 14, and the council concluded that 100% of the parcel tax should be collected in fiscal year 14-15. And this is to ensure uh, sufficient funding for the future capital projects uh, that we have coming down uh, with our uh, completing town master plans. This year, uh, the total uh, assessed value for the parcel tax or the goal will be one million eight hundred and sixty. It's the same amount. And the allocation will be 20% towards police services and 80% towards capital uh, projects, as we have discussed in our capital improvement program, and also within the budget with the 20% allocated for police services. If the council approves the parcel tax levy as it's proposed, a tax resolution of 1.8 million will be generated. The county of San Mateo will collect the special parcel tax, and it's, regular, and it's part of the regular property tax bills in December of 2014 and April 2015. Um, now, furthermore, this concludes my report. Thank you, Robert. And that was so quick. Um, any questions from council? Uh, just a you know quick comment. Uh, first off, I you know I understand. Um, yeah, I felt that uh, at this point in time, without the clarity that. We could have uh, had a moratorium of 25% of the parcel tax, as was suggested by staff. However, um, the rest of the council, and, and prudently so, have said that uh, uh, we don't know what those items that could be in these plans uh, might be. Um, in a perfect world, I would recommend that we continue this item until we had that clarity, but I don't believe that that's a possibility at this point in time. So um, I understood from my colleagues that there would be consideration in future years for uh, some sort of moratorium given the reserves, etc. Uh, so I would hope that everyone is, uh, follows through on that. Other than that, I have no other objection. Any other questions from council? Seeing none, I have a question. Oh, please. Shall I hold my comment until after the public comment? Please. Thank you. I try to say questions. So. Question is perfect. So that was a public comment. So since you're not going to give me a uh, question, I'm going to go ahead and ask uh, members of the public any uh, question, comments from the public on this item. Seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and close public comments, and I'm going to bring it back to <coughs> Vice Mayor Begolia on his uh, two things. Uh, Bill, I think that um, given that we have to decide this every year uh, and we haven't heard yet from the master plans, in fact, we are continuing it. I, I totally agree that we should do that and we should look at it with an eye to assessing what our obligations are that we've decided to take on from the master plans. Uh, um, and I am, 
I considered at the study session bringing up the idea of a 10% reduction rather than 25% reduction, which was one of the options that staff offered. But uh, I decided that because we don't know all of the recommended capital improvement projects that will be coming in from the master plans, that it would be, uh, you know, not the right move for the residents to ask for a reduction in the parcel tax this year with the knowledge that there are a lot of very significant capital improvement projects that are coming in. And I've heard from many people that these capital improvement projects are important. And I think that uh, the council from last year, which initiated the four master plans, and the staff are doing an excellent job in moving these uh, master plans forward. They're very serious inquiries into what capital improvement projects we need. And I believe that before we decide what we're going to invest in those capital improvement projects, the most expensive of which are clearly drainage and pedestrian and bike paths, and possibly uh, safety issues on El Camino, which is really Cal Trans uh, territory, but uh, we may choose to spend some money to uh, improve the safety there. Um, but before we make a decision to reduce the parcel tax, I think we really have to see what those capital projects are, and I want to find a way to go to the residents and hear from the residents about what their priorities are for those capital projects. I think that's very important for us to do. Um, so I think that w by continuing the parcel tax uh, as it was, um, without doing a reduction now, that we're essentially continuing it until we hear. And I think that's the right thing to do. Thank you, Vice Mayor Fuller. Uh, Councilwoman Lewis. So my comments are that I, I wholeheartedly think that we should continue to keep the parcel tax at its rate that it was passed just this last November because what everyone has said, we do have significant capital projects uh, that are coming before us that um, it will, and since we've reset the percentage of contribution from 40% uh, <coughs> to doubling that amount from the parcel tax funds to go towards these capital improvement projects that will help us accelerate the improvements that we need to make. Um, I re I, all, all of us council members received a, a, a letter uh, dated today uh, from a former uh, council member and mayor and longtime resident Malcolm Dudley and it goes on, uh, in, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it says how fortunate we are to live in such a wonderful place and to benefit from uh, the beauty in, in Atherton. But the, the substance is, you know, for the vast majority of Atherton residents, the parcel tax is very small and considered an important investment in their community. And it is a relatively small amount that is assessed on parcels, and it has been assessed over the years, um, it's $750 for the majority of the residents. Taking 10% uh, away from that as a reduction is a minuscule amount. It doesn't raise all that much money, $1.8 million, but it is a significant amount for our capital improvement project. So um, I know that our reserves are growing. That's a good thing. We should not be embarrassed by our riches. Our uh, property tax revenue uh, property tax revenue grew by over 9% just this last year. It's going to grow again. We are, as one of our finance uh, committee members mentioned uh, at the study session, you know, looking forward uh, to having a significant amount of reserves. We should not be embarrassed about that, but we shouldn't be foolish about it, and hopefully, with those reserves, we will not have to pass another parcel tax in another four years. Staff, city manager, uh, has brought us uh, a variety of other revenue uh, enhancement streams that we can take a look at, including the utility users tax, including um, a, you know other ideas to replace the parcel tax if, when that time comes, and we still need additional money. I mean, some of these capital improvement projects 
are you know, even $9 million, $10 million is a drop in the bucket. But we've had so much deferred infrastructure maintenance over the years that we have to uh, address these. So um, that's just, I wanted to share this from Malcolm because he sent it to all of us. And I, um, he was one of the architects. Well, he wasn't the architect because it started in 1978. But anyway. It's been around for a while. Thank you all for you know, uh, putting that um, in context for us. Um, I'm just going to very lightly echo. Um, for me, it's just premature at this point um, with all the things that we have got in motion to making the decision to do a reduction at this point. Um, I want the public to also know that even though the figures look a little different than they do normally, there's not one dime that the police department hasn't asked for that we're not providing. So when we see the 20%, 80%, uh, there isn't a reduction to any services or any funding for the police department. They are fully funded and uh, we will continue to do so. Um, and the chief has done a wonderful job. So those numbers are not indicative of the chief not getting what he wants. Um, or needs. Or needs, excuse me. Needs and wants, I guess we should <laughs> clarify that. 